Today on GeekTech, we're going to be talking about the AM1 AMD processor. Okay, sitting here right now is a great rig that I have uh, come upon. Not legally. And it is a AM1 AMD 50... 350, yes, and inside of a MSI AM1i for ITX, they do make an MATX motherboard also, with 4 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance RAM. It is 2133 megahertz RAM, even though the motherboard can go up to 1600, or can only go up to 1600, so that means it has to be bottlenecked down to 2133. <coughs> has a 120 gigabyte Samsung Evo SSD that I velcroed on there. A lot of zip ties behind this panel to keep it so clean and nice. All powered by a CX500 M modular Corsair power supply and inside of a Corsair 330R. Love the case, love everything else about it. Try to make it a very clean, tight build considering it is inside a, an ITX form factor, even though it's an ATX case. Very great. I would definitely recommend telling you the specs in a few seconds. So I'm going to talk about the physical specs of this processor really fast. I have a cheat sheet because it's a lot. Uh, the brand is an a is AMD. Processor type is desktop. Series is Athlon. Model is AD5350GAH M box B O X. Actually, so it's a, it's a Jam box. Jam, it says Jam box. Uh, CPU type is a socket AM1. That's actually the CPU socket. Uh, the core name is a Cabini. It's like Bikini, just like with a. Cabini instead. And then the number of cores is just a quad core. Name is an Athlon 5350. 5350, sorry about that. The operating frequency, I can see that, you stupid head. Operating frequency is 2.5 gigahertz with 2 megabytes of L2 RAM. 28 nanometer processor technology is a 64 bit. Has an AMD Radeon HD 84,000. No. 8400, sorry, uh, running at 600 megahertz, and its thermal design power, or TDP, is 25 watts, and the heat seek and fan are included. And that's the specs. I had a great experience building this computer. It's a very, it's a large, but yet small form factor inside, and that's what really matters, guys. It's what's underneath, down below. Now it's Right, no, don't judge a book by its cover, come on. Uh, <laughs> it has great cable management, like I said, which was very easy to work with and zip tie the heck out of because I love cable management. Uh, ample room for everything I need, even though didn't even use a single hard drive, nothing up here. Was able to put the SSD there, it was a kind of cool look. Um, great to install Windows on, very fast from doing it from a flash drive, would recommend doing that over a CD, much faster. Using SSDs in it, would not recommend using a hard drive with this rig, just because it will bottleneck its overall performance, even though it's already bottlenecked compared to some of the fuller cores out there, processors out there. Um, <clears throat> it's very fast, small, light. It's very light. I can carry it with like my pinky. So you can just <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. If I could change something on this rig or do something different the second time, I would say I would probably try to get a smaller case, as most people could observe. Uh, getting an ITX case, or maybe I was planning on building my own, but that kind of got derailed, that project. But uh, one of the things when I first found this platform was I was thinking, because of how small, low wattage it is, is getting a Pico ITX 12-volt uh, to 24-pin, and then running the 8-pin over, and then plugging it into there, and completely avoiding this very large, hefty, more or less expensive power supply. <clears throat> um, would have been a great thing so that I could have even made it into a smaller case and I didn't have to worry about power supply because when you are trying to maybe build a case, let's say, you pretty much, it doesn't take up any room if you don't have to take a power supply because SSDs have gotten so thin, it's almost fanless because the fans are just so quiet and tiny for here. Um, I would definitely have changed that. Smaller case, probably a different motherboard just because after I bought this one, I had realized that they released one that had at least two more SATA ports on the motherboard, had some more fan headers, and I had an optical out which I could use for my home theater PC, but I kind of rushed it and wanted this the second I saw it. Uh, and then maybe even trying to figure out a way to get a passive heatsink on here because it's such a low wattage CPU that there's almost no heat. And if there were, if it was completely passive, which would be very easy to do, there'd be no fans in this rig except for power supply. But they make tons of passive pa power supplies. 
So out of everything, that would be what I would do. So we're going to be talking about some uses for this rig. Um, most people would be saying, well, Alec, why would someone want such a low-end processor? And there's a few reasons. There's that it's low power, so you can use it for server, and it wouldn't cost very much money to run. You can use it for light Bitcoin mining, if you have the MATX motherboard that has four PCIe slots. You can use it as just a general server, or a FreeNAS server, which is a great software, I would definitely recommend it. Using it as a Steam in-home streaming computer, maybe in your living room or something, just a general computer that you use Office and Word on, maybe at work, or for your kid when he's doing his homework, or just a living room PC to watch YouTube and those kind of videos. Um, you could use it as a LAN rig, sort of. I have thrown a graphics card in here. It is wicked bottlenecked at the CPU when trying to game on a game like Battlefield 4. It had a lot of stuttering issues, but it is playable and is doable. I wouldn't recommend it. You could use it as a capture or a stream PC for your gaming or other live feeds like a webcam. Um, so there is light gaming in there, and what I am using it for actually right now is a home automation server to run the automation software for my entire house, which is very cool. It's capable of doing all these and more. Four core, it is overclockable, but I only by like 0.5 of a megahertz. I did that just to get it there. Um, not because heat issues, but because the motherboard doesn't allow you to go over it, so can't really do much there. And yeah, so time for conclusion. It's a great affordable small form factor platform that whether you're a beginner or an intermediate computer enthusiast that you just want a small affordable server or a small affordable whatever the uses I just named, this is pretty much great for you. It's cheap, it's small, it doesn't take practically any power. It, me in Cal Southern California where the power is expensive, it only costs about $2 to run for over 600 hours actually sending commands every few minutes for my home automation software. It has many applications, like I said, small, and on certain websites there are a ton of combos to get the CPU, motherboard, case, RAM, much smaller case of course, all for a very great price at a discounted, at a very large discount, $40 sometimes, it depends on the deals, but they're all very great. You can get different, there are actually multiple CPUs inside this lineup. This is the one I'd recommend because it's the highest. I think there are three others and they go down ten dollars or I think one of them is five dollar gap till you get to the lowest but I think the lowest is only a dual core. I would recommend the quad core but if all you need is a dual core or you need less power than I mean been, my applications have been using then you know I guess go ahead for those. So yeah here's been another video from Youth Tech. Thank you for watching. Hello guys and thank you for sticking through to the end of this video. We here, all of us here at Youth Tech, would like to just say a great thank you to you as we're still building up from the ground and we need the, all the support we can from our viewers. If you guys have any kind of suggestions or videos you want to see made or changes, just let us know inside the comments so we can work our very hardest to bring that to you for your enjoyment and our fun. And we just thank you guys for watching us and supporting us. Please just get the word out there of who we are and yeah okay. so thank you everyone for watching we hope you enjoyed the video and we will see you right back here next time on youth tech roll out go later yeah